You're listening to The College Light Bulb, presented by The Coaching Educator, where we illuminate your college path. Here's your host, Rebecca M. Carroll. Hi, as you know, I'm Rebecca M. Carroll, and I am with... Tyler Hi. So, Tyler, um, you are probably one of the most interesting people I've met in <laughs> the last two weeks. And I, you know, I kept seeing you elusively in my networking groups, but I always had to rush back to the office for another client. So I couldn't grab you. So I, uh, this is the college light bulb, as you know, Yes. and we, we illuminate career paths and educational paths. And, and our whole idea is to create a situation where students or adult students, students who are in high school have a better understanding as well as parents of the paths that people take and that it's not always a straight arrow. It's definitely not. So we asked three questions. So one of the questions is going to be, what was your educational path? Okay. Um, yeah, my educational path. So I graduated uh, high school in, in Phoenix area. That's where I'm from in Arizona. And then I ended up going to undergrad um, in Utah at Brigham Young University. Okay. Um, and uh, while I was there, I decided that I wanted to be a history teacher. And so I went through all of the history education program mm-hmm. and uh, ended up that I, it's kind of, it was kind of a crazy path, but I ended up not finishing the teaching part and just getting the history degree. So I got a history degree. And then my wife and I actually moved to Pennsylvania uh, where she was going to school. So I got married while I was in college. Okay. And, uh, and, so I ended up finishing my history degree. So I have a degree in history. And then we moved to Pennsylvania. And while we were in Pennsylvania, I ended up finishing the education part, doing my student teaching, and actually getting a master's degree in education. So I started teaching in Pennsylvania. So, so you have, that's the degree uh, I have. That's my, that my master's. That was yeah. kind of my first step. So was it challenging to transfer to another state yeah, because it man was. there was a huge difference when i hopped a state in income in a lot of things yeah, i mean that's the thing about education yeah being a, being uh being an educator so it was actually it took more time right so i was yeah. i was one semester away from student i was going to my student teaching and be done with the education part of part of it in utah but then when i went to pennsylvania it took like an extra year Okay. Like another year before. So, what was teaching. your internship like? I did and too. The student teaching. Yeah. Oh, uh, you know, um, I was so in Pennsylvania. They certify you for grade seven to twelve, and I really wanted to teach high school, mm-hmm. but you don't get to pick your placement. So, I student taught seventh graders. That was crazy. So I yeah I went after a degree that was K through twelve only because I knew that if. You know, sometimes you need to take whatever job whatever you can job, get yeah. to get in a school district. Yeah. And uh, and I have. I mean, I was on an Indian reservation with K through three, and they were really quite um, quite fun. But it's not my favorite. I'd rather give me sure. a room full of teenagers over a room yeah. full of five year olds. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, sure. but I uh, my internship was a junior high, and then I worked um, at a prison, a girls' prison. Wow. In education program, which really I loved. The junior high one, not so much, but I actually developed some of the stuff that I use now in that program. It was a good learning experience for sure, being in the the seventh graders, the junior high kids. Yeah. For sure. So then what? So you're in Pennsylvania, and what was your wife studying? So my wife went to uh, dental school out there. Okay. Was she getting a four-year? Yeah, she's a dentist. Oh, she is a dentist. Wow. Okay. Okay. I mean, her, her story is unique too, but she uh, she was one of the only female, you know, in school yeah. and stuff like that. So, yeah, became a dentist. Pretty, pretty awesome. So, That's great. Yeah. So the next question we ask is, so you have this, well, you're not done because you're a lawyer. <laughs> so what happened then? So not you had- done. So I, I taught, um, I ended up, well, I substitute taught while I was finishing my education there in Pennsylvania. Mm-hmm. Did my student teaching and got my first job in Pennsylvania. So I started teaching in Pennsylvania, did that well, the whole time we were there. So we were there for four years. And that is not a bad state to teach in. 
It's a, it's actually one of the higher paying yes. teaching space. That's yes, true, yeah. that is, and it's pretty. It, yeah, Pennsylvania it's nice, is beautiful. It's nice, it's beautiful. Yeah. 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 Um, so then after that, after my wife graduated, we moved to Phoenix, which is where I'm from. So we mm -hmm. moved back to Phoenix, and uh, I ended up teaching for four more years. Okay. Down in Phoenix. Yeah. Wow. So, but that's not the end of the story. No, so, I know, because I know, <laughs> I know your credentials. <laughs> so, so um, while I was teaching, I was actually teaching, I was a, the head varsity baseball coach at my old high school. Even. Really? So I did a lot of... Was that fun going back to your it high was, school? It was kind of cool. It was great. Yeah. There was I, actually my some favorite, teachers. Yeah, my favorite principal there. did that. Yeah. Yeah. So it was kind of, it was kind of cool. Um but, so uh, you're the varsity baseball coach. Uh -huh. Is this a large high school you're teaching? Yeah, it's at? pretty big. Good. So yeah, Phoenix like, also Phoenix has really, really good They programs. have like 5A and 4A. We were 4A, so we were okay. the same. Okay. Okay. Well, pretty that was big. good. So were you a baseball player? I was. I played baseball in college, yeah. In the college? Yeah. You were recruited? Yes. Oh, my goodness. I guess I skipped over that part. I, yes. So how did that all? So I went to BYU on a um, academic and athletic scholarship. So would you be, say, affirmative to the fact that you got more money out of the academics than you did from, uh, from your athletics? I actually think that that's true. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's what we try to say to people. So that is a wonderful opportunity, and it's like a job. People do not understand. Right. A lot oh, of people it think it's just all, you know, a lot yeah, of... I could never work during college because it's no. just a full-time job. No, so because you had to do... Mm -hmm. And so you probably had your... You started in the fall conditioning and everything. Oh, yeah. And fall ball, fall baseball, fall practice, fall conditioning. Wow. Weight training. We, we went to... This, to the pool and swam like we did everything. Wow. Okay. Yeah, so. so that's that's what so what was your position? I was a pitcher. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Okay. So any more details than you even knew, right? Yeah. No, I I, <laughs> I mean I don't I'm not, I don't know if you're aware, but I do athletic recruiting. No way. Yes. Yeah. So you're you're ah we need to have you on um one of our July 8th, you need to, this is, this is interesting because I, yeah. I really think it's changed significantly oh, sure. and I just did the radio this morning. It even changed from the time that I was a player to the time that I was a head baseball coach. Nice. Yeah. The recruiting's changed all. Significantly. Yeah, big time. Mm. Okay. So, so you end with, did you end, no injuries? You were okay the four years? Yeah, no injuries except for, um, right after I was done playing, and, and the symptoms came while I was playing, but right after I was done playing, I was diagnosed with MS. That must have been shocking. Yeah, it was, it was, it was a shock for sure. Um, so that was in 2007, I was diagnosed, but I finished playing in 05, so. Okay, yeah, so, so right symptoms after. started coming up, but you weren't <laughs> sure what they were? Yeah, um, in my very first year as an actual teacher, um, I started slurring my speech. Okay. Quite, quite significantly to the point where it was pretty scary. I didn't think I was going to be able to talk. So even doing this is kind of a miracle. It's kind of crazy that I can still talk. So. Really? Yeah. I My very, very, very <clears throat> wonderful cousin who is, I think he's five years older than me. His wife was a principal and and she was diagnosed and she had a very fast experience and... Um, like she went down how fast? Very. Oh, I mean, she God. ended up being in a nursing home for yeah. years, and she actually lived um, for till a couple of years ago. But wow. it was that was the most severe case I've ever heard of. Wow. I do have a couple friends um, that have experienced it. So, so yeah. I and I was, I was curious. I mean, you're telling me you're an athlete. I thought it potentially would be MS that you yeah. so. Is it in your family? How, I mean, how, uh, what did no, you do? Because no, you're pretty it. good about your eating and everything else. Yeah, do you think that helps? Oh, definitely. Yeah. So, um, diet, exercise, uh, and uh, positive mental attitude. I think. Yeah. So I, I work with a guy named David Lyons. Uh, that's the three things he teaches. He teaches um, positive attitude, exercise, weight training, and uh, 
Easy way. Easy yeah. Way. So you no cure. you came back. I mean, you have already experienced weight training because there's no way as a pitcher you did not do weight training. Yes. So you're a proponent of strength, that this whole strength yes. idea. Because a lot of people feel like you shouldn't do strength training when right. you're... When you're disabled kind of thing. Oh, no. Oh. No, when you're an athlete, I've oh, seen it. Oh, where yeah. people are like, no, don't lift the weights. Uh, it's like, are you kidding? Yeah, you kind of have to. Yeah. Yes. So, so it made sense to you. Mm -hmm. Okay. So coming from... Uh, quite a, a, I mean, that's, you're a pitcher. That's yeah. the kind of the star. And how'd you do? I mean, I, I was okay. I was, I was better in high school. I didn't pitch as much in college, probably because I started to have some health mm -hmm. issues in college. So when I was at, officially diagnosed with MS, they said, have you had some symptoms? And I told them some, some symptoms. Like even when I was in college, I started having problems with my eyesight and my balance and different things. And they're like, you've had MS for a while. Like, it's those symptoms are all MS. Did you just, tell anybody or did you wait until the last like it must have been in your head the Yeah, I knew I had some health issues. But um, you were you were did you tell anybody? Yeah, yeah. Oh good. I, I went to some doctors and some tried to get tested. People couldn't figure it out. It was it was kind of crazy. Yeah. Yeah, because you're yeah. healthy. Yeah. And, you know, I mean most athletes, you know, I find Yeah, I was in good shape, I was healthy, right? So you go to Pennsylvania, you get a teaching job, you start experiencing more severe Symptom. symptoms, Man. but then you decide to go back to school. Yeah. So for about... Which is awesome. I just <laughs> want to say that. Okay. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so about, for about five years, I kept teaching, I kept coaching, teaching. Okay. My symptoms were actually pretty mild. My, my slurred speech and stuff went away. Um, and I think I, I did some things to help some of those things. But uh, um, but then in my last year of teaching, my balance, my balance, my health started to get really bad. But what was, what was cool is we kind of felt like I needed to change anyways. Okay. So, so before my health even started going downhill too bad, we sort of felt like I needed to do something different. And uh, we just threw a lot of research and prayer and... Everything else felt like law school was the answer and uh, ended up going back to school, ended up going back to, uh, to law school, I went back to, to Brigham Young, same, uni so I went okay. to the same, same university, I got my undergrad degree, so I, I uh, went to BYU for undergrad and then I got a master's in Pennsylvania in education mm -hmm. and then I went back to get my law degree, so. Wow. Yeah. That's So this incredible. was, uh, yeah, I was actually 33 years old when I went back to law school so was it grueling it was very hard yeah. yeah it was very difficult was it interesting at the same time because my program i felt like oh, it was i can't even remember reading a book i didn't love but it was intense it, it was, was a very, very intense, tough yeah. program yeah laws yeah, yeah i mean we're talking hundreds of pages at night that you expect to read so how did it's you not manage fun that reading. it's law books right yeah now. yeah so did you get audiobooks? Did you try any of that? Um, no, I, I'm, I'm able to read just fine. Um, okay. The, I did have some modifications. So for any of your listeners that have disabilities, the colleges provide modifications for you. Mm -hmm. so one Only my, if you're willing to go. To go and ask. Yes. Yeah, so I, I just... so, one, so my, left, my left hand doesn't move very well. So I had to get accommodations to for extended time for typing. So law school, everything's papers. It's all written, yeah. research, typing, the tests are all essays. And, and so um, I had to have extended time because I was typing with one hand instead of a two. Oh, so, wow. Yeah. Okay. So I had some modifications mm -hmm. to get through law school. So what kind of thinking. law were you thinking? Was it just for the learning part of it? Yeah, or? It's, you know, it's really interesting because I never wanted to be a lawyer. Okay, because I was going to say, you seem like a gentle soul. <laughs> Not <laughs> sharky at all. <laughs> uh, right? um, no, it's, it's funny because, yeah, I, I, the idea of being a lawyer or being an attorney really turned me off. And I didn't, yeah. didn't want that. So, but I am passionate about the Constitution. I'm passionate about freedom and I'm passionate about legal stuff. And so, you know, I was a history teacher. I taught government, history, mm -hmm. social studies, and 
And uh, so there was some interest in the subject, but as far as being a courtroom lawyer and, um, you know, like, like you said, mm -hmm. like kind of attorney mentality, that, that wasn't really what I wanted. Yeah, my um, uncle, um, who is, uh, he was a lawyer and he, but he was in charge of hospitals. Yeah. And I always thought that that was a misstep for myself because I do really a lot of um, interest with just family dynamics and a lot of the courts and what's going on in, in courts. Um, just, you know, I, it impacts the family greatly. Right. And I, I really felt like if I could wind it back I would want to, I would still want my master's in education. Sure. I would still want to be a school counselor, yeah. but I also, I believe it's a bigger opportunity with, uh, if you have your JD for actually running programs and having a good sense of. Yeah, I um, think, I think that that's right. I think you're right. Yeah. Um, just the, the JD degree, like one, one of the professors I remember, actually, I think it was the dean of the school there. He said, um, some of you will become a lawyer, some of you will become an attorney, but really what you're getting with the JD is a, he called it a leadership degree. You kind of learn those leadership way. skills, mm -hmm. those conflict resolution, the you know, problem solving, like all, like all of that. Yeah. And learning how to think through things. And, and so. That's wonderful. Yeah, it's really good. So you yeah. finish. So now you're in your mid thirties, a little over 36. Yeah, I finished when I was 35. Yeah. 35. Yeah. Okay. It was about two and a half years. So, did um, so what? What did you decide to do with it? So, I uh, I ended up hooking up while I was in law school. I hooked up with a with a firm that does estate planning. Oh, and, okay. Um, estate planning is an area where we're doing the the legal documents and everything, sort of to prevent the court system. I, I was I was somebody that I didn't want to be going to court every day. Right. So, doing the kind of the behind the scenes work to prevent some courts. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, I could do that. So I hooked up with this firm and, and sort of stayed on with them. Um, it's probably and, shocking to you how many people do not have a will. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And and they, it's just very traumatic. Yeah, yeah, it's it's crazy. So yeah, get your will right. So yeah, well, and get, especially get, get your least, children. Uh, your basic is your will, and then I do you know the full trust planning and uh, mm -hmm. powers of attorney and all the healthcare documents. Speaking all, of which, I, I really encourage people to have power of attorney when their kids go off to college yeah. because your child could be in a state that if they, something happened to them and they ended up in the hospital with a coma, in a coma, you might not have any legal rights, Right. which people, you know, I don't mean to be sound negative, but it is, it's good. I mean, my son, who went off to the Navy, they we did a power of attorney just because when yeah. you're deployed. They're going to be overseas. Yeah. yeah. So it's yeah, we always. Do that. We do that. We do those, those documents. For sure. Yeah. But I wish people would think more about it with the with their children going off to college and have a contingency plan mm -hmm. if something happens to you. Yeah. Because there are things that happen. Yeah. There's so many different situations people don't think of, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, getting those documents in place is, is important. So, yeah. so I kind of like that aspect of the law, but um, it's really not my passion. And, and sort of um, being involved in freedom and, and uh, sort of leadership and some of those things, those are really where my passion is. Yeah. And that sort of what, what led me to this app that I'm involved with. I know, but you're also teaching. Yeah, again. So I also, I also teach at a private school. So do you miss? You just miss teaching. I just miss teaching. I know. Um, and uh, by by teaching at this private school, my son is able to go to school, which is awesome. Pays for the school. So yeah, that's good. Yeah. And you do have cute little kids, and yeah. one on the way. Well, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Within so, weeks, we're we're coming up for number four. Yeah, that's great. So yeah, that's what you were at one of the networking events, and you're talking about the app. Okay. And so I had to tear back to my office, but that night I got on the app. Okay. And I was thinking, like, I mean, I was like. It's like a little grocery store, or, or it's like a store. I wasn't quite sure. Yeah. So then I saw you again, and of course, yeah. went right up to you. So go ahead and explain it. Yeah, so it's called the Life App, um, L-I-F-E. Um, yeah. The the Life App is um, 
it's new technology, so it's brand it's brand new, but uh, it does a few things. So it's kind of this it's a, it's sort of a a payment portal or payment platform where you can actually put your credit cards into your app, similar to like this it's the exact same technology as like Apple Pay mm-hmm. or Google Pay or you know any of those uh, that you can pay with your iPhone basically. Um, but you but you put your stuff into the app. And then all of these stores, right now there's about 270 stores. Yeah, I was impressed. I I mean, everything from like Delta Airlines to Chipotle, right? Mm -hmm. So like, and everything in between Home Depot, Lowe's to Best Buy, like all of Like major brands, like we're talking about huge companies that uh, will give cash back if you use the app. Um, And so, so you literally, you pay with the app, so you don't ever have to take out your credit card. You just pay with your phone, and you'll get cash back immediately right into your right into your phone. You, you kind of See, it's kind of like building points, and uh-huh. then you can use that. Yeah, and, well, yeah, it's it's literally cash, but then also there's a virtual currency that's like building points. Yeah, and they're incentivizing people to eventually just use the cash and not the credit cards. So that's why the merchant. I mean, it's a win-win for merchants. Merchants. Uh, don't have to pay credit card fees. It's kind of free marketing for them. So it's that really, has it's to be appealing. Yeah. Yeah, that has it's to amazing. be because I, as much as now I do love the convenience, but those fees are, yeah, yeah it's challenging. But yeah. I I work with students across the United States and internationally. Right. My international students, I they always pay through Western Union. Yeah. It's just the easiest way for yeah. them. However my people from other places they they definitely pay with a credit card so i need it something yeah i I, and that's the thing that's coming so the app is brand new but what's coming is that eventually merchants or businesses are going to be able to sign up to accept the app yeah so people can pay you with that without the credit card well as soon as that happens it's, like, it's crazy. you better be at the store yeah, yeah exactly so. <laughs> well, we'll no because i think i think it's very um our the company has gotten into this bartering um yep. site and i which i really like and yeah. it has allowed me to do a, quite a bit of marketing Some which is trades yeah mm-hmm. and it's That's you kind of cool. keep the money within yeah uh, and there are, oh, there's vacations, there's just yeah. all kinds of really good things. And I noticed, and I was going to check that out because I'm from back East and flying back East is, can be quite expensive yeah. unless you do, you know, 10 planes and, you yeah. know, a three day trip. Yeah. So it's, think, it, I'm kind of curious. I was going to go in just to look at that. Yeah. So I think Delta, American and Southwest are the three. Yeah. Airlines on the app right now. Yeah, and those are the ones. Yeah. So that's yeah. great. So you got yeah. involved with this. You you have a leadership degree. Yeah. Which I like. You're teaching kids, and you yeah. like the high school age, and yeah. uh, you have little children, and you have one on the uh-huh. way. You're heavily involved in networking. So what? Yeah. I mean, what brought you to Boise? That's a good question. So when I finished law school in Utah. Uh, we, I kind of hooked up with a firm that was just getting started in Utah. And uh, after a couple of years, we were just like, why are we still here? You know, we moved here for law school, but I finished law school. And we just kind of stayed around, but uh, we just felt like we needed to go somewhere different. Mm-hmm. And uh, Boise was the answer. Boise yeah. was the place. And uh, it was really fascinating because Boise was a place that my wife and I had never been to. Really? Didn't know anything about. Just uh it just felt like the right place, and it's been it's been amazing. So I yeah, I moved here sight unseen. Yeah, I did a little we were, research though. Yeah, we did some background, and um, I liked what I saw. The growth, and I I mean I I actually came in the middle of, in the middle of the night. Um, I drove from up north. My son had just gotten out of the navy, and then he's back in again. But um, so he. He moved down here too, sight unseen, and he's loving it. It's just a great area. He has a great house, and yeah. you know, it's just, it's just, I, it's so family oriented. It's a nice area. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, it's challenging sometimes to break into. Yeah, so, yeah. so how long have you been talking about this app? I mean, you can get it right off the app store. Yeah, which is um, awesome. you can get it off the app store, um, or uh, you can actually get my link. It's appsavenow.com. You can mm-hmm. link to me. 
I think the lower residual, higher residual every time somebody downloads the mm -hmm. app and uses it that way. Yeah, we did uh, get me linked to you, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so I was glad I waited till I saw you. <laughs> I knew I would see you again, and I, I, and it was quite easy to register and get so everything really, done. Yeah. But then I paused because I just wanted to have a chance to talk to you about it yeah. and what it was all about. And it kind of reminded me of the bartering yeah. um, or some system where it's almost like the Bitcoin. Um, oh, yeah. So the Bitcoin is another part of it that's coming. Um, it's going to be, uh, I think it's coming August 1st. Like it's, So we're getting close where you're going to actually be able to use Bitcoin through the app to buy stuff. So yeah. imagine using Bitcoin at the grocery store or at uh, Chipotle, like Cold Stone Cream or Krispy Kreme, you know, like all like all these big stores are going to be basically accepting Bitcoin through the app. It's kind of a their it's first kind of really, start to yeah, it's a really cool technology. Yeah, that is neat. Yeah. Well, and I think it's just smart. It's just one of those investing things that yeah. you're on the ground floor. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. exactly. It's kind of early adoption. Right? It's like who's mm -hmm. going to be the early adopters? Yeah, it's, it's fascinating. And, and uh, so I was doing my legal business and just kind of doing this on the side. And it's sort of just in the last few months flipped. Where, where man, this app has been huge, and uh, booty old stuff. Excuse me, <clears throat> has become kind of a side business. So, yeah, yeah. So interesting. Yeah, that's great. So, um, what would you recommend? <clears throat> okay, so I mean, you're really an entrepreneur. Yep. But you're a teacher, but you also, <clears throat> so you're working. Yeah, I mean, you're really community oriented. Everything yeah. you're doing between wills, getting people <sighs> set up with their, with all of their stuff for making sure their families are, so everything yeah. you're doing is kind of connected to people. So what would you yeah. suggest if someone wanted to be doing what you're doing, a high school teacher with a side gig, which, you know, everybody that I worked with, who was really the, the most fascinating teachers that I've worked with, the ones that really loved teaching all had a side gig yeah, yeah and which was really cool they were really interesting an entrepreneur right yeah and uh talking talk and i work with a lot of uh cpas and tax people they said the best thing you could do is be an entrepreneur on the side for tax reasons you know mm -hmm. if you're just if you're just paying your w2 as an employer you're just getting killed on taxes yeah so that's something i mean to, for entrepreneurship and i love it excuse me no, that's um, fine. You're allowed to drink. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're allowed to drink water, I should say. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, as far as recommendation, I, you know, it's hard because everybody's path is different. My path is probably a very unique path. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, so so I actually joke around sometimes that I'm overeducated because I have a I have a bachelor's, a master's, and a JD, and you know, and uh, so I have all these degrees and. And different things, and you know, maybe I didn't need them all, but I think that the the education I got has really led me to where I am today. Yeah. And so having all of those degrees has really given me just tons of learning experience. And well, just keeping up with your and, wife. I mean, yeah. come on, she's uh, yeah. a dentist. Yeah. Yeah, and that's the exactly. no. I just think it opens doors and it opens so many doors. And I wouldn't have. You know, I, I I was very frightened to go to school, so I I just felt like I, I didn't know what I wanted to study, but I also was fearful of, oh, can I do it? Can I do it? Um, and I had, I definitely had some learning issues, and I really didn't understand how my brain worked. Right. The thing that I, you know, and I can remember doing that classic, oh, I don't need school. I can do this. And I, I, I am a good worker, and yeah. that's okay, but everything when I did transition I had a business when I was younger and it was great but when I transitioned to wanting to change everything that I wanted to do required a degree exactly and it really opened my eyes when I was sitting in a classroom and people were outside of your bubble and yeah. they had different thoughts and ideas based on their experiences yeah. and it was just really really interesting and maybe because I was older, I wasn't that much older, but I, it really opened my eyes to this idea that, wow, okay, so this is, this is really good discussion. Yeah. You know, 
I mean, there were always some classes that were, of course, yeah. you know. But yeah, getting getting the education, I think, has been key for me. Is that you know that learning, you know, everything in life is learning, mm-hmm. and that really just kind of paves the way to where I am today. Yeah. So, how do people get it? So, we're pushing the app because. Yep. That's cool, and yeah. it's going to benefit people. Yeah, so it's just revolutionary technology. It's let's just, talk yeah. about how. What do they need to do, and how do they need to link up to you? Um, so my my website is appsavenow.com. So appsavenow.com. Appsavenow.com. If you go there, you'll see Tyler and Ashley. Hi, welcome to the Life app. There's a two minute video that explains everything. Okay, and that's really it. You can download it from there and go from there. Okay, Super so. Simple. So, um, why the name of it? Did you come up with it? Um, the Life app? Yeah. Uh, no, this is not me. I, I'm just getting that. So, the Life organization, Life Leadership, is started in North Carolina. I think it started in Michigan, but their headquarters are in North Carolina. Okay. So, it's an East Coast company. So, this is not my technology. I'm just a member that gets paid to promote it. Yeah. That's basically it. Well, that's good. It's good. It seems yeah. like it's good. I, be... I didn't have to come up with an app and technology like that's not me right but yeah but yeah so there's kind of there's a there's a way to get paid to promote it and so, that's great yeah. so lifeapp.com um so go if, save go life. just go app save now app save now app save now.com mm-hmm. so that's, that's gonna be the link to me you can actually go you could just go to the app store too um but that's how that's how you get it it's yeah. to my account and your information is in there if anybody has any uh-huh. questions yep. or it's got my email and that and phone number. And that Excellent. Calls. Well, thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, you. I mean, this is a really interesting I mean, you've had an interesting path. You've had a challenging path. Yeah. yeah and it's I, a very different yeah. path for sure. So. And I like that I, I think you used all your skills from being an athlete. To still move forward. Oh, I mean, I find the academic. The skills you learn as an athlete, they carry over in every aspect of your life. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. And so that's have, that's everything it. from working hard to not giving up to you know, pushing through obstacles. And yeah. And yeah. We're gonna have to have you back on because I think <laughs> it's really, you know, especially. Um, I think it's important. And so, do you feel so? Your co when you were coaching, you actually were experiencing your MS. Oh, yeah. yeah. So how, I mean, that's a long day. Coaches. Yeah. So I, yeah, I think I went to, I went to school like six in the morning and by the time I was done coaching, it was like 7 p.m. So that's a long day. And that's, that's probably part of why we need, we needed a change. Yeah. That must have been hard to give that up. Yeah. But look at what you're doing. I thought that was kind of my bad. I thought that's where I was going to, go but mm-hmm. you know uh different paths right? yes we do changes so, come so. changes come and we don't always <laughs> want them but exactly. um i do like that you know i just get a lot of the athletes that i work with they're so disciplined and they're so they're just good people and i know that you you know in the news you always hear the the stories that are so they're a smaller number of them but i just have found that people are very very good and they're good to their teammates and they're really focused as you learn for sure yeah and a lot of a lot i don't know i just I, and i've been working years with athletes and i i have to say that there were very few that were able to play at the college level those are the ones that i found to be much more genuine and kind and i mean you always That's get good. that athlete that peaks at high school and thinks they're going to play yeah, college yeah, yeah. and it's like no yeah. yeah. So thank you so much. Thank and you. um we'll I definitely want you on again. And we yeah, will be, you know, getting that life app out because I think it's a really good opportunity. Cool. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Bye now.